How y'all doing? I'm back. <laughs> um, you know, it's what? Let me see what time is it. You know, I like to get the time because I like to see the time at the most. I be getting me up to spend time with him. So, um, it's two. It's two forty-three a.m. And um, you know, one thing I found out that this witchcraft hours. You know that the witches be up praying round by from. They be up two, three, four praying against people. Who are they praying against? The saints of God. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> the true, the true saints of God. We don't sleep like the rest of the world. We be up spending time with the Lord because this is the best time I found out through my journey to spend with the Lord. You know, I don't, I don't sleep a lot. You know, I be up. Um, I like to commute with the Lord. I like to um, talk with Him. Let me get comfortable. You know, I like to let me just lean back, you know, and fix this, fix this thing up, you know, like that. Or, yeah, you know, I make my own clothing. I don't, I don't make them to 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 sell right now. I make them for myself. You know, one thing I realize is that I can wear me. Why wear Jordan or why wear Gucci Cabana? Why make these people rich when they already rich? You important too, you know. I had to find that out through love. I, I, it was a time in my life where um, I didn't love myself. You know. I thank God for this word right here. This the word of God uh, taught me how to love myself. You know. Um, uh, it, it was a time I really, really, really didn't love myself. You know, suicidal, drinking, smoking. I was, you know. So I want to just say this before I get started, you know, because I feel it in my spirit to say it. Th you know, to, to to this person, it's got to be a person or maybe persons. You know, um, love yourself. Don't don't. You got to know that Jesus loves you. You got to know that Jesus heals and Jesus delivers and that Jesus saves. You no, know, for real. That's that's real talk. You know, God is real, man. Um, he taught me how to love myself through, through Pastor Lee, straight way to heaven, Church and God in Christ. You know, that's, that's the other church I had went to that I'm going to get into. You know, I caught <laughs> I gave her hell at that child. I'm not going to lie, you know, but um, she loved me through it all. You know, God taught me the love of God through her because, you know, she really, she really cared for me. She was kind of traditional and old fashioned with her stuff, I must admit, but um, she loved me and, and I don't, and I don't have anything against her. You know, she the pastor that um, she whooped me with this word. She she in, in her church, she she came up to me. She gave me exactly what I needed. She didn't hold back. If she saw me acting up, if she saw me the devil, she called me the devil. You know what I mean? If she saw my spirit about to act up, she gave it to me like 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 none other. It wasn't a prosperity church, you know. And um, I love her for that. I really do. You know, I really do. At the time, I didn't understand it. <laughs> I didn't understand it, but I understand it now. You know, and um, I'm at peace. I'm at peace. You know, I don't want nothing up my nose because, you know, I'm here. I'm on camera. You know, now, I'm just real like that. I'm not going, I ain't going to pause nothing. I'm nothing, nothing. I'm human. <laughs> Gotta clean it out, you know? Yeah, so. She, I, you know, I was suicidal. Really. Um, I, I just didn't love myself. I was drinking, you know, and I wasn't even a hard drinker, like hard liquor. It was just like beer and stuff. But I just used to drink it all the time, that moat liquor. You know, and drank it to the point where I was so skinny, 
smoking cigarettes, stressed out, you know, and I found out, because I didn't know those things were spirits. Remember now, I'm transitioning from one church to the next. In the, in the last video, I was telling you about my mother and, you know, about how I grew up. But um, if you go back and listen to the other videos, you'll hear about me in the other church and I fell out. That was like a praise and worship church. That church didn't preach against the word. I mean, that, pre that church didn't preach against sin really like that. You know, I found out about really sin and how to walk with God do straight way to heaven church and God in Christ now there's no perfect church so people go act up I found that out you know and then you know one thing I was saying that Pastor Lee was about she said brother Kenny once you, you, you leave here you ain't gonna find no other church like this and she was right I don't been to many churches services and they it's none like that you know, nothing like that boot camp church where it, the sin, because everything is prosperity now, you know. But like I said, I grew up, God had me under um, the thing that he hate the most, which was sin. What I mean by that is he taught me what he hate. God hates sin. You understand? He hates sin. It stinks in his nostrils. That's Bible. Look it up. Um, so he taught me about that, but but he but he he taught me. It, it was still a religious church that did religious things. And then the most I from that because he took me through stages. I know how to praise. I know how to worship. I I know how I pray down on my face. I learned that at the first church worship I like to bow down because he's a king so you bow down to the king and I come into his presence I bow down like my head look at up <laughs> I bow down to the king you understand I respect and reverence God because of um, not because he can hurt you or beat me up but because he saved me and what I mean by saved me he saved me from myself you know what I mean I didn't love myself I didn't have peace in my mind I just didn't have no peace. I didn't know nothing about it. But I thank him this morning. I truly do for the peace that he has put into me. The joy. The littlest things in life. You know. I don't worry about the money. Money, I always have money. You know. That, that's not a, you know. That's not. That's something to thank him for. But I don't. I don't, I don't thank him for houses and cars. I mean, I thank him for that, but the main thing I thank him for is my peace, for saving me from me, from the alcohol, the smoking. It, it was killing me, you know? Slowly but shortly, that's something the devil not telling you. While you smoking weed, you steady down to... Look, all right, let me tell you a story, right? I, when I was living in Queens, New York, there was a guy that he drank all the time. Oh, he was young and vibing. Drinking all the time. Now, because all that time he was drinking, he in the hospital now. They cutting off his limbs and stuff. You understand? God saved me. If I would have kept drinking and smoking, I could have had lung cancer. Because I started smoking and drinking from a young age. A young age. You know what I mean? So, when God is, what God is trying to do is save you from you. He's trying to save you from destruction. He's not a slave taskmaster with, with a whole bunch of rules. The, his law is for you to have a better life, an abundant life. That's not living, drinking and smoking, partying, doing the same thing over and over again. I got tired of that circle. I got tired of that circle. That I'm in that circle. You know that circle if you win it. Every day you wake up, you do the same thing. Smoking, drinking, uh, sexing. 
There's no circle. Je Jesus Christ came. He came that you have met, that that you may have life and that more abundantly. He came that to break that circle, to break that generational curse. My generational curse was depression, stress, you know, um, sleeping around with different women. I'm at peace now. You know what I mean? I, I really am. You know, and I really don't really don't care who don't like it. <laughs> I'm at peace, man. I'm at peace with myself. I'm at peace with my God. You know, can't you see it on my face? Like, I don't really stress nothing. I don't been through too much. But um, I said all that to, to prepare you for straight way to heaven. Because <laughs> I went through, I went, I'm not going to lie, I went through hell there with them brothers too. Some of them. I hope they still not the, that same way. You know, I don't know, but I'm I'm going to be visiting them soon because they still my family. So I don't really have nothing bad to say about them. I realized that I I had to go through that to build who 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 I am now. But I went through some stuff there. And, um, and I put my past and I put them through some stuff too. You know, so it's twofold, you know, because she took on a street dude. And when, she, and when the pastor took me in, but first let me let me recap a little bit because to, to, to tell you exactly how that transition happened. Now, real quick, you know, you know, I told you that I met uh, um, back then. MySpace was out, not Facebook. MySpace, and I met a woman on MySpace. I'm just gonna go through quick. If you want to hear the whole story, you go back to those videos when I was talking about. You no, know? um, and um, I met her, and. Um, you know, we talked over the phone for a while, so I agreed to go out there to where she was. So, boom, I went out there where she was. God snatched me up within that week. I transitioned from sleeping around to being in the church sleeping <laughs> with the Lord. That like, God is good. And um, then I said the usher came up to me. Brother Kenny, you know, as time went on, like I said, go to the other videos if you want to hear the whole story. And she said, Brother Kenny, you don't have to wash up in the church sink no more, whatever. Come to my house and wash up. That was a big mistake, what I did. When I went to her house to make take a shower, because I don't know how it happened, but we started sleeping together, me and the usher. And it took God's spirit from me. And that was my first time, my first experience in understanding that you can't have sin in, in the Holy Ghost. All right. So from that. During that time, don't you know when you fall back out of God, you go back into them same old patterns. So I went back on the chat line, meeting women. And during that time, when I was on the chat line meeting women, I met a, a, a girl, I ain't calling no names, in Massachusetts. And she was going to this church. So God was setting me up to move me because he already knew that my time was running out in this church. He was about to move me to the church to teach me about sin now. Because I didn't know about sin. I was learning. Remember the church, the first church I was in was about praise and worship. They wasn't preaching on like, yo, you know, you got to walk clean. And remember, you may say, well, why you didn't read it yourself? Because I couldn't read and write. Remember, God was teaching me how to read and write through his word. And um, so now I met her and um, she, me and her made a plan that, um, oh, she said to me, Yo, I know some brothers at a church. They'll come all the way to Connecticut because I was in Springfield. I mean, I was in Connecticut and they was in Springfield. So Connecticut, from 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 Massachusetts to Connecticut, where I was, it probably was like a 30, 34 minute ride, 40 minute ride tops. She said, they'll come out and get you. And then we had the plan that when they when they come get you, you could come to my house after and live, you know, and be with me. So I said, okay. God had other plans though. He intervened. Because one thing about me, I really wanted the Lord. That that's serious. When you really want God, He go, He He wants you too. You know? But He used steps and people, places and things. I know He used this to snatch me up. I know that much. And um, I don't know what He used to snatch you up if if you saved or if you're not, you know, just call on his name. No, he see if he'll come through, he'll come through for you. And um, the brothers, when they came pick me up, I seen something different about these brothers. These brothers, strong, at least they seem strong, you know, in certain ways. But they were strong, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take that from them. These brothers, they was strong. Everybody got their they, they struggles, but they were strong. They were stronger than me, you know, when they come down to God. You know, I'm talking spiritually. 
and um they they come and pick me up and um and, and if y'all looking at this, know that I love y'all, you know. I love you brothers, all of y'all, even the ones that was treating me bad when I first got there and stuff because all that had changed in time, you know. But I'm going to get to that. I'm talking about the bad part right now. <laughs> and uh, they didn't treat me bad right away, you know. Not all of them, though, not all of them. The ones that was treating me good, they know who they are. And the ones that was giving me a hard time, they know who they are. So I don't have to call no names. That's not what this is about. That I'm not here to bash nobody. I'm just telling my story. So, guys, please understand. I love y'all, but I'm going to tell my story just the way it happened. And um, they picked me up. And, uh, you know, I was around these brothers and they was talking to me. They was talking with strength. I wasn't used to that. One brother, I'm going to call his name because I love him. I really do. I love them all, but this one, he t he told me, Minister Charlie. He told me, "What sin do you have to commit?" To this to this day, that saying stays with me. When when he spoke into my spirit, it stayed with me to this day. What sin do you have to commit? They had another saying, you know. <laughs> well, if God can keep. The moon and the stars and all that stuff in place that he can keep your flesh from sinning. Powerful words to me. And um, that's the only name I'm going to call out because I ain't got nothing bad to say about him. <laughs> um, and um, they took me in. And it was something different about this church because when I got... Now keep in mind, I'm homeless too now. Because if you go back to the to the other videos they was picking me up from connecticut i was living out on the street because god didn't let me go back to my hometown i i had an abraham expense uh, experience god called me out for my kin folks and he wasn't letting me go back no matter how stupid i was acting i'm just coming back home real talk real talk i've been with the lord for many 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 years he scrubbing me and whooping me so this is what i'm talking about is it's not quick. It's many years done past, you know. So when you hear me speaking, it's like the Bible. The Bible don't say, well, next year this happened. It make it, it, it seemed like it all happened back to back, but it didn't. It was spaced out. It just don't go into all that. So I want to let you know, the, the, this what I'm talking about is over a period of time, you know. It's not one day this and then the next month, boom, 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 no. All right, so... um. I spent many, many countless years with the Lord. Real talk. Many days. And they and and if they be real, they can tell you that this brother was in the sanctuary with the Lord all the time. When I when I pop up, he there. Um it's just me and God in the sanctuary. You understand? It's real stuff. So I didn't get like this overnight. Amen. So um they picked me up. And when I got around them, they used to pray like, save me, Lord, save me power and then i was like yo i never heard stuff like that save me lord power power over my flesh power over my feelings power over the way i do things i was like yo yeah lord and that's what i need i need power because i really love the lord i just i fell out from this i'm not blaming nobody i learned not to blame people but you did it. You approached me. You knew that I was doing good in God, this usher. She knew I was doing good in God. You spiritual. And, 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 and you came and offered me a shower and took my Jesus from me. <laughs> took my light from me. No, real talk. I like to laugh and stuff, but, but, I, but I wouldn't take back the journey because I learned a lot through the journey. You know? But the road would have been much easier for me. You know? I'm, I made it hard on myself on this journey and, and uh, other people made it hard for me. But I'm talking about my part. I made it hard for me and my baby is because I, I didn't understand. I, sh I was a street dude straight off the streets. I used to spend countless hours on the street. No, I wasn't a shooter on the streets. I wasn't a murder or, or nothing like that. My I, I, I took after my mother. If you go to my video, um, Thinking About You or 
I got a music video thinking about you on it. It explains what my mother used to do. And then that song, Barely, I barely made it, but your love and kindness see me through. It explains. So, so of course, you're going to pick up something from what in your household that, that your parents do or something. I picked up the hanging out in the street and the sleeping around. I didn't pick up the heavy drugging and, and drinking and stuff like what was going on in my household. So, of course, when I came to them brothers, I was full of demons. I was, I was, I was just be out on the street drinking, sleeping around, partying, dressing, just to attract women. Nah, you know what I mean? That stuff, that was a curse on me. I found that out when I came to God. He set me free from that. And I'm staying free from that, from them spirits. <laughs> I'm not playing with it, but let me get back. Because you know I hopped. And, um... Yeah, them brothers got around me and started praying, save me, Lord, save me, save me, Lord. And I started feeling the Lord come back. So that plan that me and that sister made for me to go out, I didn't want that plan no more. I said, I'm going to pursue this because I really wanted the Lord. I didn't want to keep, I was tired of the, a sinful life. It was beating me up, suicidal thoughts. Dark. That's what sin do. Depressed. Depressed to the max. Stressed to the max. I just wasn't the type that I'm going to go jump off a roof. But I put myself in a situation where and that you can shoot me. I don't care. Or you can beat me up. I don't care. I put myself in those type of situations to get killed. Real talk. Mainly, I'll tell you one story. You may say how. I was I was I was sleeping around with. Now remember, everything I tell you is not glorifying. It's for purposes for you to learn that the Lord love you in your mess, and He can save you and pull you out. It's not to say, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, the the scene puffed out. I don't, I, nah, no. So don't get the wrong message. Real talk. Um, I was messing around with a woman that had a man, and he bust in. On us, but I didn't care why because I'm suicidal. So he in his mind he must have thought, yo, this guy not even flinching. Nah, it's not it's not about me being brave and stuff. It's just that I didn't care. That's how much at the limit I was. I didn't care to the point that he just looked because he see I didn't flinch or nothing. So he in his mind he must have thought this guy got a gun. He got he got to have something, but I didn't have anything. I was at my end rope. That if you take my life, you just take it. You understand real talk? That I don't even care. I don't even want to live no more. That's how miserable I was. That's how, and, and me, that's how bad those spirits had me, those demons had me. I was done. So I, that's just an example. I have so many countless examples, but, but we don't need to get into that. I just wanted to show you that one. And um, he snatched her out <laughs> of the house, right? And they left. Guess what? <laughs> when they came back, guess who still was there? Me. <laughs> Guess who left? He did and left her with me. That's how crazy I was. Not 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 crazy in the way because I had a gun and I'm like, oh yeah, tough. No. I just was ready. I was at my end rope. So when I say that God saved me, he saved me. He saved me for real. He saved me for myself. He saved me from death. A life of because imagine if I would have got killed in that state. I would have been forever separated from the Lord. His love, you know, that's Bible. If you die out of out of God, that's a rat. You one thing you gotta know is that this is flesh, right? This is like a inca, but this a house. The real you is inside of here. That's why you can sit here and think, and you can talk to yourself. That's the real you without your mouth without your mouth moving. You can still talk in your head. That's you inside. That's the real you. We are spiritual beings. We spirit. This is flesh. This is a house. It's made from the, the dirt. It's made. God made man from the dust of the earth. And blew breath of life into his nostrils. He blew his spirit into the, to the, to the vessel that he made. So without this. Why you think. Why you think. Right, I'm going to go a little deep. I'm going to give you a side note. Why you think demons 
Mm. There's spirits all around us right now. To you who listening, it's spirits all around you right now. Um, to me, it's spirits all around right now, but they can't do anything. This is not they rem. This is an earthly rem. Right? This is an earthly rem. Why you think they want to inhabit your body? They inhabit your body so um, they can operate out of you. They need body. Why you think Jesus Christ came through, 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 through a human, through Mary, and to flesh? Because he couldn't come just like he can, but then God will be violating his own law. And God don't go against himself. You understand? But I ain't going to go too deep. You know? and, but um, he, he, you know, so he came through flesh. And, and the word dwell through flesh. What's the word? This. This is Christ, the word. And he, 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 the word of God came in flesh to save men. You understand? It's deep. I don't want to entangle the babies that, that's listening. You know, it, what I mean by baby is people that really don't know about God. So I try to stay basic. All right. So that's a side note. The side note is, you know, you, 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 you are a spiritual being. You understand? This is this this. That's why I say ashes. When when people die, they say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. That's for this. But now you gotta go somewhere. You understand? Even you, it, the, 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 depending on how you live, it determines where you going after this life. For instance, I'm gonna give you another side note. If you don't know me, that's why I don't like people that say that when they preach a prune, this person will live like the devil all his life and they talk to the preacher preaching them into heaven. No, he went to the lake, according to this Bible. He 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 he, he awaiting that hell fire. He ain't in paradise. Stop it. You know why? Because, and I'm gonna give it to you simple and plain. Um, say you don't know me, you that's listening. You gonna let me in? I'm knocking on your door. You don't know me. I'm a stranger. I'm coming to your door physically. Not, 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 not. Let me in. Oh, I'm, I'm brother Kenny. My name Kenny. Oh, prodigal son. Uh, let me in. You gonna be like, nah, I ain't letting you in here. That's the same way as God. I don't know you. You gotta know God for, 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 for God to let you in. And how you know God? Through by following his law, living his word. Whether you believe it or not. It's that simple. Uh, uh, Nobody gonna let a stranger into their house. You've been living for the devil all your life. You think God gonna let you in to stop it? You know, there's there's rules to this. Just like there's rules on your job. Just like you give your children rules and regulations. Just like your mother had rules and regulations with you. There's rules and regulations to this to entering in to the kingdom. If not, why would the the the, the um just Google it? Say where where the scripture at? Where where, where they said. Um, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name? Lord, Lord, haven't we cast out demons in your name? And we did all these miracles in your name? And he said, depart from me, for I know you not. You be workers of iniquity. Why? Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Just because somebody using the name of Jesus and, 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 and healing people and stuff. Yeah, they doing it because there's power in the name. That don't necessarily mean they know God. And that's how a lot of people are getting tricked and fooled by these false prophets and all this churches and stuff because there's power in the name and this is a believing thing you can have faith and believe for a person healing in the name of jesus and they'll get healed because it's power in the name it is it's, it's not about the person that's a little side note but i ain't gonna go too deep look it up yourself so i just want to say this before i go back to stuff if you feeling depressed and stressed out those are spirits they housing you Possession is not like what the, t the TV and the movies make it seem like. Like the exorcist, ah, I'm possessed, ah, come out, nah, demon. Huh? Possession is possessed. I was possessed. I was possessed with a lusting spirit, perverted spirit, meaning perverted, meaning pornography, masturbation, all that stuff. All those spirits had me. I'm just going, I like to keep it real. If, if I can't keep it real, nobody can be delivered. You know what I mean? You got to keep it real. Um, cussing is a spirit Lying is a spirit Smoking is a spirit Drinking is a spirit All those spirits in you Inhabiting your body You know what I mean But let me get back to this So uh, when I got around them brothers They was like save me Lord Save me Save me Lord So it made me it, 
those spirits started coming out of me because I started saying it too. They said, say it. Say it. Say it, my Lord. Say it. I really wanted God. So when I got into it, that desire to, that plan me and that girl me, uh-uh. I didn't go for it. After service, them brothers dropped me back off in Connecticut. They didn't even know I was homeless. They they said, well, I'll drop you off. I said, just drop me off right here. Because why? I was sleeping under somewhere with uh, like un, in the, with my books. What books? The books from my poems, my, my music. Them poems is, was my music, you know? Them books that I've, 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 I've been writing for many, 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 many years from 09 up to now, still writing. You know, and I had, and, and in my and in my in my um in the previous videos back, I, I, I explained how I lost those books. My daughter thought I didn't want them no more, so she threw them out. You know, yeah, and um, so I lost those, but I I, I write all the time. You know, um, but I can't never get that back. That was that journey. You know. And, um, but I got it in my mind. And, um, so me and that sister, I, I, after a while, I started really going and going and going. And then I finally told the pastor there, I said, you know, I'm homeless. I, I don't really have nowhere to go. But I just, I kept coming back there. But while I'm there, I learned lessons. I learned, I learned. I was pursuing God. I wanted to pursue it. And I guess he made me work for it this time. Because before it just flowed easy. He came, blah, blah, blah. But this time, I guess I had to prove that I really wanted him. You know, because I had a little bit of knowledge of him now. You know, like I said, everything I'm talking about is not in one day. It's a time expense. And I had a little bit of knowledge of him now. And I'm learning how to read now and write. He teaching me. My writing is getting better. It's not like kindergarten writing. <laughs> Where my E looking like a C. <laughs> you know? And, um, yeah. And uh, God is so good. So now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Now remember, when I'm talking about straightway, it's not all in one. It's just, it's all over the place. So don't think, you know, this is many years ago. Like, I probably came to them, like, in 10, 10, 2010, coming into 2011. Because I was at the, I met God in 09, and I stayed at the other church, not even for a year. And then I met them, and he moved me over there. So I learned how to praise and worship at this church, and then I learned how to fight against sin at Straightway. I thank God. I'm not going to lie. I thank God for straight way. If it, if it wasn't for them, even the way some of them brothers treated me, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here right now. You know? And um, that's where Broken come from. I made that song Broken based on them brothers. Some of them, not all of them. They know who they are, the ones that mistreated me. They know. And um, that's what I was um, talked about and torn apart by people who said they love the Lord. Talked about just like a dog crucified and spitted on. Religious folks can be so harsh. I had to learn this lesson hard. Jealousy tear brothers apart. Shouldn't be this way in God. So when I make that song, I know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And um, I was with them for many years. But I didn't have anything. They had wives and a place to live and stuff. I was living in the church, so why beat up on me? <laughs> you know, I didn't have nothing. But people still be jealous because I had Jesus. I really had the Lord. I was happy. My joy was back. You know, my dance, my praise. And this time I knew to hold on to it. I'm not going to say too much about them because I love them. You know, but you, you guys put me through it. You know, just know that. But just know that I don't hold nobody. I love you. Real talk. And um, I, I appreciate it, I want to say. I appreciate it, you know. So because I appreciate it, I'm not going to bash. I would never do that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the same old person I used to be, you know. So I'm going to leave that like that, you know. And I'm not going to really say much about you guys. I just don't feel it in my spirit to do that. So I'm not going to do that because I love Pastor Lee. I really do. I love her. I'm just going to talk about her. I'm going to leave them out of it. I'm going to talk about the love of her. 
and how she did the thing. But know that y'all hurt me. And um, I, I appreciate the hurt now. So I'm saying thank you. Because for what y'all did to me, made me strong. How I was an outcast. How I was rejected. Uh, at least that's how I felt. And you know it. So I'm not going to get into all of that. That'll be in my book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to talk it like this. I'm going to write about it. Because I'm writing a book. Oh yeah, I do it all. Um, that's gonna be in the winter time. I start my book because it'll give me something to do. You know what I mean? During the winter, because you gotta know I don't work for nobody. I work for myself. So soon I'm coming out with merch. You see, it don't be discouraged. Different stuff. You know, I'm coming out with um, coffee mugs and stuff like that. Yeah, I am. You know. <laughs> Uh, I am. I'm coming out with different shirts and sayings. It's all based on godly stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, based on my music and words that I wrote, you know, because I have a lot of words, a lot of sayings, a lot of slogans, and I think it, the people need to buy it and have it, you know? Um, I like to help the homeless, you know? So the proceedings will, some of it, yes, will be going to me, but the po most of the proceedings will be going out to help people put clothes on their back and shoes on their feet. Because I don't really, listen, I I want to have and I want to be comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I know already God made me rich. He going to make me rich. But I don't really care about stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is, without money, how can you take care of his people? So I understand why God gave me music and why he's doing me the way he's doing it. And he had to build character in me because... When he give me the riches, when you know, when he give me access to the kingdom, to the kingdom vote, that's right. Because when you in the kingdom, you you don't be poor. Don't let nobody fool you with that. That's religious. When you with God, you rich. He he blesses you with money. He blesses you with substance. That's why the Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." What things? House, car, business, not a job. You got to tap into your gift. I know I'm hopping. But I moved the way the Spirit of the Lord moved me to talk. You got to tap into your gift. Your gift in God. And your gift will make you rich. That's why you miserable getting up every day. Working for somebody 8 hours, 10 hours. And you barely making it. They taxing your money. I refuse to do that. I've been stopped doing that. You know. God feeds me. God, God take care of me. I don't want for nothing. You know what I mean? That's real talk. I don't want for nothing. The only time God cut his supply off, but I start acting stupid because <laughs> he can't allow me to use what he gave me to go because I was I was crazy. Don't you know when you when, when you going backwards and God, those same spirits come back and even more you worse. You, you were you in the worse state than what you was in before. So he can't allow me to um, do that. I, I thank him for that. So it was times where I had jobs and stuff and I was doing stuff and God was supplying my needs and I start acting kooky and snatch it away. That, that's what he did for me. He don't do that for everybody. Some people he's just like, and then some people the devil gives stuff to, and they thinking it's God. But no, God ain't blessing no mess. You better know that. If you in mess today and you being blessed, that's the devil. I got I got this Bible tell you. I can tell you right now what my conversation is based off of. My my conversation is based off the wilderness. Meaning when the when when after Jesus after John baptized Jesus then and the, and, the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit came on him descended on him like a dove the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil forty days and forty nights what you think the devil tempt him with substance things he said if you I'm just paraphrasing if you can read it for yourself it's in Matthew's four start there and he said uh, Matthew's chapter four verse one start there and um, he said if you bow down to me. I'm just saying, I give you this, and I give you that. And he showed them all the four corners of the earth, of the world, in a, in a matter of minutes, you know, because he's a spirit. So, um, the devil give you things, too. You could, look, let me tell you something. You can be, um, this is not about a church, so I'm not going to say church. I'm going to say you can be um, doing good in God. You can be serving God. You can be um, praying every day. You can be um, worshiping them and everything going good. Here come the devil. He has sent something your way to throw your focus off. Maybe you, while you was praying and stuff, you was probably praying for a man, a husband or something, or money. And God and the devil would throw a job your way, a good paying job. But it's taking you out of your time with 
God. You think that God did that? God didn't do that. You know? That's the devil. He throws you off. He throws you off. But now he's moving you away from what? Jesus. With money. That's what he do. Or or maybe, like, I'm going to use me. Like, say, um, I'm waiting on a good wife. I want a praying woman. You know what I mean? I want, I want somebody that understand, yo, it's, what if, if I lose everything today, would you still be with me? Would you still pray with me? If I couldn't perform, let's just talk sexually. If I couldn't perform like that, if I lose that, would you still be with me? If I lose the activities of my limbs, my eyes, if I'm house put back, because them vibes are for better, for worse, rich or for poor, can you stay with me? That's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? It's real. You know, because you never know what's going to happen on this day. So, um... The devil offer you things too. He may offer you that woman. Now that woman come and that where I was spending this time with God and talking to you guys now, she taking it up. See? It's a block. So he offer you things. You know, don't be fooled. The devil offer you things too. And all these people that they, they, they say, oh, I'm a Christian because I'm not a Christian. You know what I mean? I'm relationship. I never claim that Christianity stuff and all that. I'm relationship. Me and the father got a relationship. You know what I mean? This is a relationship. We talk together. We eat together. We walk together. I don't want to hurt him. And he don't want to hurt me. You understand? This is a relationship. I ain't going to violate him. And he ain't going to violate me. That's a relationship. You understand? Um, it's not a religious thing with me. It's automatic. He woke, he woke me up. I opened my eyes. This flesh don't want to get up. I get up and come commute with him. Just like if your husband woke you up, baby, I need to talk. You're going to open your eyes. You're going to talk to him. Hopefully. Or just like your wife woke you up. Hey, baby, I, I need you. Call on you. you you're going to go help. Hopefully. You're supposed to. You know, that's that. That's a relationship. You know, I just gave it to you naturally just in case you didn't catch it spiritually. And, um... You know, so I that that is it's, it's it's just it's oh my lord! You just don't know how good God is. You know, He's a good, 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 good. He's a real good God, man. He's a real good God. So I built my relationship with the Lord, and we we were strong now. You know, and I don't let nobody interfere with that. But the devil will offer you things too. So you got to be smart. You got to know that God not gonna give you something to snatch you out of Him. All right? So the devil will offer you things. So don't never get it twisted and think it's God. You know? So now, I'm, I'm, um, let me get back to Pastor Lee. I went to Pastor Lee in the church. So now, she, she, she told me after she found out in the wig, she said, don't worry, I got you. But I guess she was praying because I still was going back out to Connecticut. I had to prove myself to God that I really wanted him. I had to chase after him. But I kept going. Then she finally, one day I didn't show up. They was looking for me. I could. I I had a hard day out on the streets, basically, because I was living out on the streets of Connecticut. I was homeless, but I still was pursuing God. Um, and that's what cracked it. I think they was looking for me on the Easter day, but I had it hard. I couldn't make it. And and that's when I think I talked to her over the phone because I had that boost chirp. That that was when boost chirp was out. Ch -ch -ch where you at? <laughs> Where you at? You know that y'all y'all don't know about that. All the old heads probably know about the boost truck because they got iPhones out now. <laughs> and um, they called me and they came and picked me up and they took me in and she, I was sleeping on the church floor from there again. And um, I really enjoyed being there with them because I learned a lot. I learned how to pray. I learned how to fight against sin. And um, Pastor Lee, she was so sweet to me, but she did not play with me. She saw the demons in me. And, and, and I used to think she's speaking to me, but she wasn't speaking to me. She was speaking to them demons in me. She used to say things like, you can't come in here being a player in the church, Brother Kenny. You know, you can't come in here trying to play God. He see your tense, your attention, you know. She told me a lot of things, you know, and... Uh, she used to just whoop me with that word. And I want to let you know, Ma, I thank you so much for that. And soon, I'm going to come visit you, you know, and come and, and shout and praise with you, you know, because I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. You know, that that's that's not a joke right there. 
I'm not the same old person I used to be. Remember when you said to me, and I'm just saying this to you, just in case you're looking at this, and I hope you see this. Remember you told me that you said, Brother Kenny, if you ever make up in your mind to live for the most, for God, you'll be a powerful force. You said it. And um, I finally made up my mind, man. You know, and uh, you're right. You know, I thank you. You know, I thank you. I really do from my heart. And um, so um, I know God, 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 God is giving up to do some things for me, you know, and um, but I wanted to build up character. You understand? I don't I, like got shows coming up and stuff. When you performing in front of people, character, you know, I could have been performing it. Going in front of people, it's not about me. I want to make sure I build up character. I want—I gotta make sure all of that—that—that that, that filth is out of me, you know, because there's some real beautiful women out here. And women was my problem. And when you in ministry, they full of women. The the the, the, the churches and stuff that go performing, they full of women all on you. I'm like, I'm not no rock star or nothing like this. This is this is this is Jesus business, like be so. Um, I always said to myself when I when I marry, my wife won't have to work. I want to take care of my wife because when I'm going to perform it, I need her by my side. I don't want to I don't want to travel by myself. You don't have to work. My wife wouldn't have to work. She's my she's got to protect me the same way I got to protect her. You don't let them women get to your your, your husband. You know, they come to take me down, and I don't let no man get to you okay so now this is what i want to talk about the part in straight way about my wife you know a lot of stuff is my fault too because i was told not to marry her so that's the part i want to talk about right now and um pastor lee told me it, it was it was like three years now i didn't have a woman three years i'm in the past now and I've been, I was celibate, I wasn't sleeping around. I told you I wasn't gonna do the same thing that I did in the last church, and that's why I learned. So I'm, I'm stronger in God now, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. As a man, it was time. It was, for me, it was time. I, was, I, I wanted me a wife. And um, it's not good to copy off of everybody else because I wanted what them brothers had. I saw them, at least it seemed like they was happy. But I come to find out they wasn't. They they was going through with their marriages and they was going through. I hope that what everybody's marriages have worked out now and stuff like that. Even some of their wives was flirting with me, throwing themselves at me and stuff like that. I was like, what is this? But you're not going to get me. One minister wife threw, threw stuff at me and I went and told him. And he blew up. I'm like, yo, bro, calm down. I'm here to tell you because I love y'all. That's, the, you know, I love y'all. I could have took your wife and, and slept with her. But I love you. I respect you, brothers, for taking me. I respect this. I respect y'all. I won't never do that. Why do that when there's plenty of women out here? So I'm thinking we good. So I'm coming to you telling you like, yo, take care of your wife. Because your wife flirting with me, doing all kind of motions suck motions with her mouth and her neck and telling me so we all had a meeting at the pastor's office and he wanted me to bash her but i didn't want to bash her because i love y'all i want to see y'all work out so that showed me that i was more stronger than him because he couldn't take it he in there screaming nah, 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 nah. but anyway to make a long story short yeah you know that happened bro so ain't no denying that I'm just not calling on it. This is unnecessary to do all that. I'm just telling my story. Because like I said, I love them. But it's my story. Because I'm 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 in it. So y'all guys happen to just be in it too. So I'm going to tell it. That don't mean I don't love y'all or I'm talking about y'all. So we're not going to twist that. And um, I'm telling this to help somebody. It's not about anything else. Um, I'm telling this to show people that they can stand strong with the Lord. That they don't have to take down. You know? And, uh, and I'm going to tell it, just point blank simple, no matter how anybody feel, I'm going to tell my story. And um, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to say how it came about and all that. Oh, that's not, that's gossip to me. 
I'm just telling parts of it, you know. So, yeah, she came on to me and I, I turned it down. But the next day I called her husband. Da, 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 da. He blew up on the phone. Next thing you know, I'm in a pastor's office with him. We all having a meeting. She going like this to me like, uh, where you had a chance at. Now you ain't, I ain't want no chance with you anyway. Spirit, why you think we in this office? I'm in this office to, 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 to tell on you so this y'all can fix your marriage because I'm not trying to get caught up in that and you take this Jesus from me I'm holding on to this Jesus because I already got it taken from me so to, even though I I wanted somebody but that's that not my wife that's somebody else's wife why would I sleep with her all that's going to do is take my Jesus away I can't have her I can't marry her this is not a David and Bathsheba move you know what I mean just read up on David <laughs> how he took that man's wife and send him on the front line and get killed. And then he had the baby with him, but God didn't um, allow that baby to come. But God allowed Solomon. David is Solomon's father. But I ain't going to go too deep with y'all. Um, yeah, Solomon, the wisest man of, 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 of the world, of his time. You know, like God said, it'll never be another one like that, nor... No, um, it would never be another one like that, or it never has been something like that. It was never, never, never man wiser than Solomon yet. Um, and um, yeah, so I told on him, and that and that blew up. It messed up our little business we had. We had a little business together, and I used to tell him, "Stop letting your wife come around this business, and you know that she like like that's stupid." So it made me feel uncomfortable. Real talk. It made me feel uncomfortable because she shouldn't be around us. You already know that she was just, you know, come on, bro. But um, anyway, that happened and blew up. So time done passed and now I'm ready for me somebody. And here come my ex-wife. Here she come. She just came in the church. And I liked her energy. I liked her because she was giggly. She wasn't like the rest of the straightway girls they was all me like when you got jesus you're not supposed to be all struck up yo you supposed to be happy giggly she was happy giggly she matched my energy because i'm happy giggly i don't like all that dead stuff because if i marry you and all we got is sex we ain't got nothing so i like the I, you know i want somebody i can laugh with talk with play with i'm romantic uh affectionate i like all of that taking walks i'm old-fashioned i like doing all that so we was doing that thing. So, Pastor told me, I didn't understand Pastor Lee back then. She was protecting me. She put me, she said, Brother Kenny, leave that woman alone. I said, oh, Pastor, you just don't want me to be happy. Everybody else got a wife. Everybody else got a husband. I want to be married too. She said, Brother Kenny, wait on God. <laughs> so, I've been waiting three years. You know, I'm fussing. I'm fighting. But God telling me, look, wait on me. Do her. But I didn't want to wait. I snatched her out the church. When it married, I had another church. That one year went good. Uh, we, we was married. We got married in 2012 up to 2016. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, or no, 17. Bye, 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 bye. 2014, that marriage, she was... <laughs> Yo, this girl wasn't no joke. Put me through a lot. But you know what? I, I'm not even mad at it because remember, God told me not to marry her. And like I said, um, that's where my song Trials come from. I could have been left. Not not the album. My whole album is called Trials. But like I said, I have a song on my album called Trials. You can go on YouTube and, and look at it for free. You just got to find where my album at on my page. My album is on my page, on my YouTube page. You got to scroll down and when you see album and singles or go to playlists or maybe something, it's there. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not really into this stuff like this. Like I said, God, God gave me this music. I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for this gift. So therefore, I don't really pursue it like that. Like, oh, I could go to scream and say, but I'm on all music screaming, all platforms. You can find my album, Prodigal Son, album Trials. And just listen to the music. That's real talk while I'm talking. <laughs> and it's called Trials. She put me through it. You know what I mean? And um, 
when I um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more on her and then when I come on tomorrow what's tomorrow Saturday Saturday I'm not gonna do a video or maybe I will because I get up extra early Saturday after I spend with the Lord and I go work out because I'll be having some other things to do I'm getting ready to do some music videos to to the to the songs that I have out and stuff I, I'm gearing up to do some things I'm I'm about to um start my merchandise and stuff like that make my merch my t-shirts coffee mugs i'm getting ready for the winter because i want to make money in-house so i can go buy some um i want to buy coats and stuff for the homeless i want to do stuff like that for the homeless because i'm big on helping people you know and i really like to help the people that when i was out there in a bad state i saw how what kind of state they was in i was like i gotta i gotta do my part you know what i mean i gotta do my part whatever so I, of course i need money for myself but i also that's how i pay my tithes i don't pay my tithes to no church i pay my tithes to the lord by give, really giving in the people that really need it out on the street amen that's a that's a side note you know i still give to a church building if i'm in one you know i'm in a church building now but that's that's that service is only i don't go for the word i go because the the, the bible say fail not to assemble yourself with the saints of God. So I go to praise with them and dance and hear their testimonies and get strength from them and strengthen them. That's the only reason why I go to church building. I I I I read this word for myself. I study this word for myself. You know, so I wouldn't never tell you don't go to church building because the Bible tell you to go to a church building. To fail not to us no it, it don't say go to church building. Forgive me. It say fail not to assemble yourself with the saints of God. So how are you going to assemble yourself with the saints of God? They all in the church building. You know what I mean? So that's why I go there. But um, I pay my tithes and offerings another way. I go give it to people that really need it. I'm not going to give it to no pastor that's driving nice cars and do all this. I don't do all that. You're not going to get me like that. I'm not no dummy. This brother right here, everybody not homeless because they um sleep, because you see them sleeping. I mean, everybody's not an alcoholic or a crackhead because you see them sleeping on the bench or they going through stuff you know some people are in deep mental depression they darkness and they need to be pulled out so what i'm going to start doing is um selling selling merchandise and stuff and then taking part of that money that i make and go out and maybe take them out to eat buy them a coat and talk to them because i don't like to mistreat people and i talk to them about jesus see i learned the technique like what Jesus did. These Jesus didn't just preach to people. He fed them because he knew that that ain't nobody trying to hear the gospel if they hungry. You understand? But if you if you coming up if I'm come up to you and you hungry and I'm telling you Jesus love you, God bless you, you're gonna be like, well, where the blessing at? The blessing gotta come through me. You understand? I know that. So I will take money out of my pocket. I always do it. I just don't put stuff on film. The only reason why I put stuff on the film because that's not that's not for everybody to see. I'm not trying to be glorified. It's for Jesus to be glorified, not me. I don't play that glorifying my flesh stuff type stuff. That's why I'm not always on the on the screen. I, I got so much music. I can just hit y'all with music, music after music after music after music. I can make video after video after video after video. I don't do that because it's not about me. I need people to see Jesus in me. I need you to see the God in me, not me, not this flesh. So I don't do it like that. So maybe once in a while I will start filming me, you know, being a homeless and talking to him. But you won't see that a lot. Just like you don't see my face out there on the TV screen. Like I can be on MTV and VH1 and my music. And all. It's good like that. I have people approach me. Believe me, this ain't no game. But I, like I said, I wait on the Lord. I don't want to rush out into something and I ain't ready for it. And then I'm back for it. I made a mockery out of God and a fool out of myself. The devil ain't going to set me up like that. So I take my time and make sure I got God's spirit and make sure I got him good. So when I go out there and that woman, Pastor Lee used to say, you better be ready for that, that lady that come with that 44D. And she, used to, she used to make me laugh. I mean, but she's telling the truth, meaning she said, be ready for when that woman come to take you down because not all women look ugly. You got some women that look really, really good and you got to have power over them, over your flesh. 
So I spend time with God to make sure I got power over my flesh. It ain't about me being out there because I already know he going to put me out there. This is my destiny to be on the microphone. This is my destiny to be in front of the TV. And the, and the, I already know that. It's my destiny to be have music out for my voice to be heard. I know my purpose in the land. So there's no rush for that. What I want to do is work on me first. To make sure when God give me a wife, I'm treating her right. Or when God give me a wife, I'm not sleeping around on her because this other woman look better than her. Because you're going to always have a person that look better than the next person. That's just life. So it's about character with me. It's about integrity. It's about really having God's spirit down on the inside. It's not about me being out there. Because when, when it's my time, I'm going to shine. You best believe that. When it's my time, you're going to see my music, you're going to hear me, you're going to see my video, you're going to see me everywhere. But you're going to also see me standing with Jesus. That's the most important thing here. What is it to gain the whole world and die and lose your only soul? The devil is a liar. You're not getting me with that. So anyway, yeah, I'm gearing up to sell merchandise and stuff because I want to um, I wanna um, feed the homeless. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be getting cold out there. You know what I mean? So make sure when I got that merchandise up. It's going to be simple stuff and I give you deals, but make sure you buy because it ain't about me. The money that you're going to be giving towards my merchandise and stuff is going to help others. So you're going to be a part in that. Sow your seed on good ground. You understand? When you sow your seed on good ground, God give back. That's real talk. I, I And I had to learn that. you know. So no, I don't go tied into no church. The only church I ever really tied to was Pastor Lee. She deserved that. She deserved the offering times because this woman, she wasn't about the money. She used to tell me, Brother Kenny, if you think your money go make me stop telling you this word, you can take your tie and tie it around your neck. <laughs> that pastor was something else, man. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but I loved her for that. I love her for that. Real talk. And I learned a lot from her. You know? But um, I'm going to tell you about my wife on the next go round. You know, because that's a lot. I just wanted to gear you up for it. You know, so I just wanted to leave you with this part. I was told not to marry her. I snatched her out the church and married her. For the first year, it was good. Then all the things that she was dealing with that I didn't know about, that what God knew about. Oh, my God. I, yo, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. We married out of lust. But I truly believe that in my heart, if we would have just stayed together and pray, God would have worked it out. But she was doing too much. Too much. This girl caused me so much pain. I got a song, Frustrated Tied. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't drop it yet. Yo. Oh, man. But you know why I stayed? I stayed because I feel like I, need, I deserve this because I was disobedient. So I stayed in it for years. But then it came to a point, God, because this tomorrow when I talk, it's only going to be about that because there's a lot I got to say about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I hop too. I move with the spirit. I had me moving. But I want y'all to know to be blessed and know to always put God first. You know what I mean? Everything else will work out. And I, and I, and I want to thank y'all for allowing me to vent to y'all. You know what I mean? Because that's all I'm doing. I'm just telling my story, venting, you know. Doing, do, operating in my gift that God gave me. So y'all be blessed, you know, and get ready for what tomorrow's talk. Cause I'm gonna tell it all about, <laughs> you know. But I'll just leave you with this: the, the, the affectionate stop everything. This go, yo. I'm gonna say this one. One time I came home, and and um, I saw our panties on the floor with 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 with. with with a rag, like a rag to wipe. And, and you know how I know she did something? Because when I walked in the kitchen, she tried to kick it under the couch. But I already seen it. I already seen it. I just didn't say nothing. It don't make no sense saying nothing. What I'm, I'm going to say, you cheating. You know? I was just, from that day forth, I was planning on my escape. Like, I got to get out of this. I can't stay here, Lord. It's not going to work. You know? But God had did something to my heart. I wasn't the same old person I, 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 I once was. That's what God do. He transfer you. I used to be a, a, a Casanova, a, a, um, a, um, a Jigolo and all that. You know, I had my swag. I'll never forget this one brother told me, bro, you lost your swag. <laughs> 
But the thing is, I was leaving that lifestyle. I wanted to leave it behind. I wanted to become a square. I'm a square now. You know what they consider a square. I'm a family man. I can stay with one woman and we bore it together. I don't want that excitement life or nothing like that. I'm, when I say excitement, I mean partying and drinking and smoking together. Me and I, no. I want me somebody where we praying, we going out, we eating. We a family with the children. You know? Like that. We doing we doing things with our children together. We doing things as a family. I don't I don't want that other life. I don't already live it. And that's why it's so hard for me to find me a wife now because everybody partying. Everybody smoking and drinking and then, you know. And I'm waiting on that one that I can settle down with and we can merge our families together. Because I got grown daughters and I got two grandchildren. I got Xander, the little baby you always see me with my grandson. And, and my, I'm not never leaving them. Even when I get married, I want us to merge. Merge your, if you if you already got a family, I got family, we're gonna merge them together and we do family things. We go cook out in the backyard, you know. We 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 relaxing in life. We don't need the outside world like that. You know? That's hard to find. But that's what I am. I call it a square. I'm a square now. So for the Holy Ghost, and I love it. I'm simple. Put it like that. I want to live a simple life. But at the same time, I need the woman that I married to understand all this money that's coming in is not for us. I, 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 I help people. You can't stop that. Don't come in here trying to stop me from what my destiny, what God got me doing. Because you may see a million dollars on the table, I'm saying. All of that is not ours. I don't want a woman that shop till she drop. No, you got to understand that our ministry, my ministry is helping others. Either through words, finances. Um, any which way I can help, I'm going to help. I'm going right now, I'm starting a Spanish school today. You know what I mean? I'm starting a Spanish school and I'm going to learn Spanish and I'm going to teach English. Look how good God is to Christians. And um, I'm happy about that. And um, people that's less fortunate. And I get to help them. So that's me. You know what I mean? That's what I like. And um, that's what I like to do. So I want to say, y'all, um, put God first today, all right? And um, know that no matter what you're going through, if you give it all to God, give your all to God, your whole heart. Seek him with your whole heart, and you'll find him. I'm talking about the true and living God. And remember, when I come back tomorrow, when it's, it's showtime, I'm going to tell you about my wife, my ex <laughs> But I don't blame her no more because I understand that I was told not to marry her. So you get what you ask for when you go against the most high. Yeah. <laughs>